So today I'm going to give you a checklist that'll give you eight success criteria for delivering great marketing plans. So you can use it yourself if you're developing your marketing plan before, during, and after the plan. And also if you're coaching or reviewing somebody else doing marketing plan, if you're a business owner or entrepreneur and you have a marketing plan presented to you, you can use this easy to remember checklist to find out, is it a good plan? Is it going to work? So let's find out what it looks like. Uh, if you don't know me, I'm Gareth Flood. I'm a marketing professional for over 20 years. I've helped my clients gain over $100 million in gross margin through marketing-led efforts. And I'm looking to do the same again, and also just share what I know about marketing so we can have better marketing in a better world. So if that sounds of interest to you, then join the journey on this channel, or find out more at stepstogrowth.com. All right, now let's get into the success criteria. The first one to check is, is the marketing plan informed by customer and situational understanding? So if you follow me for a while, you know, I'm always getting across really strongly that the heart of marketing is finding out what the customer wants and making it available to them. That's basically what marketing is. So is your plan informed by customer understanding and situational understanding? So situational understanding is, do you understand the market that you operate in? You, you live in a country that has things going on politically, socially, economically, have you figured all of that stuff out and how it's impacting your industry or the customers that you're targeting? And I've made another video on this that you can check out, which it goes through how do you pull together your market information to then make insights to put into the plan. And the second thing is about customer understanding. Have you done a study and got some information and insights about your customers, about the people you are targeting? And there's lots of ways to do this. I have other resources for this. One of these, for example, is this video I made on perception mapping, how you can map out what your customers think of you. So you need to know what's happening in the market that you operate in and what's happening with your customers, because that is what you're going to base, what you're going to do in your plan. So that's the first thing. Is the plan informed by customer and situational understanding? And if it's not, this is why it's important to check this at the beginning or you're starting your plan if you already started, take some time, go back, get more market information, get more insights on the market and the customers. So that's number one. Number two, is it valued by the customer? So in any business, you have a product or a service you are selling. The sale is the transaction of value of which the price is part of that, but it has to be valued by the customer. You have your product or your service and you're going to make them an offer and they have to see value in the offer. Firstly, to actually do the financial trade, pay for it. And secondly, when they use your product or service, what value do they get? How is it making their life better, faster, easier, simpler, thinner, healthier, whatever your offer is? Is it valued by the customer? And have you tested that? So you, you think what you're doing is valuable, but the only way you'll know is when you actually hit the market. You can do customer insights, customer research, just go and talk to people. And obviously, once you start making sales, are you checking the offer, refining it as appropriate? So it should be quantifiable, right? If, if possible, absolutely try and how much is it worth? And the best, simplest way to quantify things is via the price. If you're too highly priced for what people think the value is of what you're selling, you're not going to sell. So you can play around with price to find the right price point where people think I'm getting value for this thing that I'm buying. But there's other ways to quantify it as well. So if you can quantify how is it valued, you know, it could be weight loss in the health industry, um, could be calories in the also in the health industry, it could be they're making more money if it's the investment industry, what percentage return do they get, how do you increase their percentage of sales, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. If they use your thing, what benefit are they going to get and how are they going to quantify it, which they will want to do, otherwise. How do they, they, it won't work for them. How do they know it works? And you want to quantify it, which will ultimately come back into your offer, saying, if you buy my thing, you will get this result. So you will, I sell you, I sell you X, and you will get Y result by Z date. That's the simplest way of thinking about it. So is it valued by the customer? And has it been tested? That's number two. Number three, is the experience the customer has consistent across touch points? So you're going to make a marketing plan that's going to have a bunch of activities at the end of it you're executing in the market 
And you have to check in your business or the business you work for, does the customer have a consistent experience? Because simple example, there's no point having a, a wonderful social media campaign or some adverti advertising campaigns happening. And then they pick up the phone to place the order. No one answers the phone. They're on hold for 40 minutes. And we've all had this happen to us. You try and call somebody and you just on hold for like 40 minutes. It's frustrating. Your customer service doesn't get back to you. Your fulfillment lets you down, etc. If, if Particularly if you're, in, if you're charging more and you are more of a premium experience, it has to line up all the way through your business. So don't make a wonderful campaign at the front end if it can't be fulfilled with that same promise at the back end. Do they have a consistent customer experience? And conversely, it's easy to talk about that at the premium level, but also think at the low cost level. If your offer is, I'm selling you the cheapest pen on the market and I'm gonna deliver it to you for 50 cents, that is my offer, then that is a consistent touch point. They get a cheap pen, it gets delivered, and that's the end of the story, okay? So the next one is number four. Is the plan and what's coming out of the plan differentiated and impactful? So most markets are ultimately, many products are commoditized. So there's two ways to look at this. One is you know, things get commoditized over time, like pens, as I just said. And the other thing this is talking about is your competition. If you're selling a very similar product, which in most cases, most people are, is what your plan is saying and doing different to your competitors? Because if it's, if it's saying exactly the same thing, it's not that we're differentiated. You're not different. So if, if there's three to four big competitors in your space and you're all saying exactly the same thing, why would somebody choose you to buy? How is a customer going to differentiate between you and make that choice and there's lots of examples uh, in industries let's think of like tires if you go to buy a tire is all the tire companies saying the same thing our tire keeps your car safe on the road so if you if you want to go get into that market and you're also going to say the same thing but you're going to compete against companies that have been building a, a brand around that for a long time as well as distribution channels you it's going to be very difficult so you have to think you don't have to go extremely the other thing, to the extremely the opposite end of the spectrum to say, I will say the opposite or something so far away from my competitors if um, you know, that might not be the best thing to do if the thing you're offering, say it is only safety. It might tie as an example, they might only sell safety. So, but the way you position that, the way you describe it, it can be different. Just make sure you are differentiated versus the competition. So when customers are looking at your company and your offer and your product, they think, okay, this is different enough. I'm not looking at the company I just looked at on a different website two minutes ago and I can't tell the difference and the price is $5 within of the same level. Okay, differentiated and impactful in the market. Impactful means, will it break through? Will it cut through? So again, if you're gonna use a very similar looking ad with a very similar looking message to your competitors, it's probably not going to be impactful. So what kind of advertising or communications are you using that's gonna cut through the clutter and the noise in the market? Because it's very noisy in pretty much every market. Consumers and customers are bombarded by you know thousands of messages every day. And how do you cut through that so that they at least notice you because you need awareness to is the first trigger they need to at least be aware that you exist and then they're prompted to take that a step further to look at your offer so are you different to what everybody else is saying and is it impactful enough the things you're going to spend money on to actually cut through some of this noise and reach people and you can test this against competitors with you know customer focus groups versus competitor information and literature and ads etc so Check, is the things in your plan differentiated enough and was it impactful enough in the market? And if it's not, go back and revise. The fifth thing to check, does it line up with the business strategy? And I see so many businesses over time, they fail at this. Particularly if you have a marketing manager, a marketing team that's disconnected from the business and they think, we're gonna do this great marketing plan 
and we're going to focus on premium and make a lovely brand. But say, for example, the business strategy is to be lowest cost operator. And then you try and make a premium brand strategy. There's a disconnect. So say in, in an, let's use an airlines example. In the United States, you have Southwest Airlines. In Europe, uh, UK, you have like Ryanair. Their strategy is lowest cost operator. So take, strip all the cost out of the business and give people the cheapest tickets. So then if the marketing team is then saying, well, we want to have a premium experience and do wonderful extra over and above service on the plane with gourmet food, it's not going to work. There's a massive disconnect and you would have actually wasted your time. The senior management signing off the plan won't sign it off because it doesn't line up to the business. And even if you did implement it, the customers would be confused. They'd be confused, like what is going on here? What is going on? So it has to line up with the business strategy. I've said this many times, get your business strategy right first. How are you going to win in the market? And then, then do your marketing plan because the marketing plan flows out of the business plan. So that is the last thing on number five. And the next one, number six, is it supported and bought into by the whole team? Now this is another classic mistake I've seen some marketing teams do. They go away in a room, they are the experts, yes, this is true. They make a wonderful plan and then they bring it like Moses coming down the mountain with the tablets and present it to the rest of the business expecting adulation. And that's not what happens, okay? If you if you just show something to people that they've never seen before and say, go, go forth and implement, if you're gonna show that to like the sales team and they think it's not gonna work, or again, you pitch it back, you show it to the senior management, uh, the leadership team, the management team, the CEO, and it's just completely disconnected because they didn't have their thoughts and input, so they think it's not gonna work. Or human psychology, people like to give input. So you have a couple of touch points along the way of you show them some drafts, you ask their input, you allow them to have a couple of points of input which show up in the plan if they're relevant and then they can see their thumbprint or fingerprints somewhere in the plan they felt like they're part of it it saves all of this hassle so you can do this in setting up the initial structure of the plan if you say you've done a first draft run it by um, the sales team and the leadership team or the management team and get some input you don't have to Take all of that, make that clear to them. You are still the expert. You know, marketing should be leading the business because you're focusing on customers and getting customer-led growth. But check it is supported. And so when the final product comes out, they recognize at least some of it or they're expecting some of it. Don't give it as a shock of like, oh, hey, here's the plan. Or, or even worse is when um, advertising and communications and social media things go live and people in your own company haven't seen it before, right? So the sales team is suddenly seeing things on LinkedIn or wherever, and th they don't know what it is. And then they get queries, and they're like, I don't know what this is. You know, it, it makes it painful. So do an internal launch as well before you do the external launch or some kind of sharing where you just share this, hey, this is what's happening. This is the calendar for the year. This is what you're going to see in Q1 month by month for the plan. Your plan has to be supported and bought into by the whole team. Coming in at number seven, does the plan show results in improved business? So again, every business is different to what results they're after, but ultimately you want to link back to money. So if you're gonna show this to the sales team, they're gonna ask, how is this going to increase sales or lead generation or conversions? And then the management team, the senior team, business owner, entrepreneur running the place, they will also want sales in some form. Why? Because they want to increase revenue. Sales equals more, more sales equals more revenue. More revenue, even if your cost base is the same, means more profit. And that's ultimately why businesses exist, to create profit, to reinvest, to make society better by sustainable, healthy, adding value, businesses. That's the only way we can make this world ultimately a better place. Because no matter what you want in life, no matter what country you live in, especially if you want some sort of social plans and programs, they all have to be paid for. And business is the only way to create value and pay for things. So think, how is my plan going to link to results that improve the business? 
Ideally money, because that is the oxygen for a business, revenue, sales, cash. Without these, the business dies, everyone loses their jobs. But it might be different in different parts of the business too. So you might have, well, we want increase in customer satisfaction, which will also ultimately lead to more sales, or um, it, could be, it could be other things. Uh, figure out what's best for your business that makes, it could be like brand, led so we're a new business so the result says we want better brand awareness and then we're going to follow that up with creating brand preference which will ultimately also lead to sales so think about branding communications customer metrics internal staff metrics and then ultimately uh, products and sales and money and try and link it and ultimately try and do a return on investment calculation for your activities and what the plan does at the end of the year. If, if you can never link it to money at some point, you're going to get shut down. So this is very important. And I always say at the end of the marketing plan, you have your execution plan and then your post tracking what happened, the return on investment part, very, very important. So make sure it is linked to results in improving the business. And the last thing, number eight, of course, your plan success criteria has to be executed flawlessly. So again, if you have a wonderful plan, beautiful PowerPoint slides or Google slides, lots of animations, graphics, so beautiful. Everyone thinks, oh, what a beautiful plan, it's gonna be awesome. And then it doesn't get executed, it doesn't get implemented properly. This is also the greatest weakness in so many businesses. You need what you're going to do you can have a summary in the plan this is how we're going to implement it quarter by quarter month by month but then beyond that if you really want to do it well you need like a detailed execution plan for each person running their part of the plan down to a weekly level of what's happening and then how are you going to track that is it monthly meetings at a minimum in some cases it's like weekly meetings is everything on track and in some cases, you can have you know, daily meetings, daily catch-ups, daily stand-ups, what's working, what's not, who needs help, what's behind, why is it behind, and you need to develop some kind of dashboard, cockpit, the easiest thing is with uh, traffic light systems, and all of your key activities, are they red, amber, slash orange, or green? So green, obviously on track, amber, slightly behind but not and red we need to intervene we need more help we need more resources we need to, to fix something here it needs to be executed flawlessly because that is ultimately how you get back to sales improving the business and showing just how valuable marketing is so you've made the customer offer you've got the product it's flowing into the market you're getting sales then next year you ask for more resources you'll get them you, ask, you want need more people, you need bigger budgets. This is how you get it, executing flawlessly. E executing flawlessly. So spend a lot of time on a detailed plan and how you're going to track, measure, and review the plan and review the return on investment. So the money you spent, what did you get for it? What impact did you get for the business? So that is it. Eight things, I did them in reverse order, but you can see on the right, the phrase to remember, the word to remember is delivers. Success criteria to delivering great marketing plans. You use this word delivers, and then you can check across each of these. So what you do is, like I said, the start of your plan, halfway through your plan, at the end of the plan, that you can use this, go through and check off, does it differentiated and impactful? Is the customer experience consistent across all touch points? Does it line up with the business strategy? And also, if somebody brings you a plan, you're the entrepreneur or the business owner or the manager for the business and you're reviewing the plan, same thing. Look at the plan and then go through this checklist to find out where are the chinks or the holes. Is it informed by customer situational understanding? Is it valued by the customer, the things they're saying? Do they have a great execution implementation plan? Can I see this? Is, do I have confidence this is going to be executed flawlessly? Can I see what they're spending money on and the activities they're going to do? Is going to result in, in improved business and whatever is most important for your business at this time and is it supported and bought into by the whole team so when this thing goes live live everyone's going to rally around it and help implement it because 
it's going to be the main thing driving the business. So use the checklist, use that word, success criteria to deliver great marketing plans. And if you want a bit more help, check out some of my other videos. For example, I made this one about marketing information, how you can get market information to go into the plan, and also perceptual mapping. And I did a couple of videos around six steps to easy making a plan and also if you need help actually how do i write the plan i need a structure i need a proven format and structure to write the plan then check out this video about how to write your marketing plan with a proven method within six weeks so i hope that's useful for you please don't forget to like subscribe and turn on notifications so you can get more video content like this when it comes live and i will see you in the next video